Hi everyone, I'm back. We're going to continue today with Maimonides on women. And I'm going to read you some excerpts from um, um, Maimonides and Science, Religion and Judaism. And some of these will come from the Mishnah Torah. Uh, the, some of these writings from the Guide of the Perplexed. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to read a few so you get an idea of how the Jews perceive women. And this is coming from the Guide 1-2, and it says, Through the intellect, one distinguishes between truth and falsehood. And that was found in Adam, in its perfection and integrity. Find and bad, on the other hand, belong to the things generally accepted as known, not to those cognizized by the intellect. Now man, in virtue of his intellect, knows truth from falsehood, and this holds good for all intelligible things. Accordingly, when man was in his most perfect an excellent state in accordance with his inborn disposition and possessed of this intellectual cognition. Now he's talking about the Garden of Eden here when they were first made before the fall. When Adam was made before Eve, he didn't know good from evil. He didn't have innate bad in him. Like I told you, the Jews believe that evil is innate, that it's a choice. You either choose to do good behavior or bad behavior. But because there wasn't anything to oppose him, he didn't know about any of those things. So he was totally pure in that state. That's what he's trying to say. And he had 100% intellectual cognition. Okay. He had no faculty that was engaged in any way in the consideration of generally accepted things, and he did not apprehend them because they didn't exist. It was just him being pure and in a very pure environment. Uh, so among these generally accepted things, even that which is most manifestly bad, namely uncovering the genitals, was not bad, according to him. And he did not apprehend that it was bad, because there wasn't any such thing as bad. It wasn't known to them, of course. They hadn't eaten from, committed the sin yet, so there was nothing bad. So being, having the genitals uncovered was, was a normal thing. However, when he disobeyed and inclined towards his desires of the imagination and the pleasures of his corporal senses, when you see something and you fantasize about it, that's corporal, right? That goes all up in the mind. Inasmuch as it is said that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes. He was punished by being deprived of that intellectual apprehension. He therefore disobeyed the commandments that was imposed upon him on account of his intellect and becoming endowed with the faculty of apprehending generally accepted things. He became absorbed in judging things to be bad or fine. So he's saying that here, uh, that when he saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes, the way he was punished was that some of that 100% comprehension of the intellect was removed. And so it was downsized. His ability to understand and comprehend was downsized because uh, he therefore disobeyed the commandments that was imposed upon him uh, of his intellect and becoming endowed with the faculty of apprehending generally accepting things. So 
as we see now, the people in the world that are not intellectual, they just generally accept things. They don't question them. They don't look higher. They don't search higher. There isn't a drive to know. Okay. So uh, now I'm reading from the Mishnah Torah, Hilkat Yesoday HaTorah 4.8. And it says, the soul of all flesh is the form which it was given by God. The extra dimension which is found in the soul of man is the form of man who is perfect in his knowledge. So what he's saying, the inner soul is a perfect man. The inner soul is how God made Adam in the first place before the fall. That's what they're saying here. Okay. And concerning this form, the Torah states, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. So he's saying that before man sinned, the, 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 the man was made in the likeness of uh, of God. It was pure. He, he knew all things, just like God knows all things. Okay. And they're making reference to Genesis 1.26 here. Uh, for example, granting man a form which knows and comprehends ideas that are not material, like the angels who are from without body until one can resemble them. So basically what this is saying is that um, before the fall, man was granted a form uh, which knows and comprehends ideas that are not of the material world. They're higher, like the angels who are form without body. So spiritual beings, okay, until one can resemble them. So here, the, what it, what it, if I read this the way it's, it's, it's reading to me, is that the, the striving is to reach that perfected state before the fall. Now I'm going to read from the guide uh, uh, 1-6. It says the term woman was fi used figuratively to designate any object apt for and fashioned with a view to bring in conduction with other objects. Thus it says the five curtains should be coupled together a woman to her sister. So what is conduction? It, to conduct something is to draw it right? And uh, so that's what that particular paragraph means. Now the guide, the introduction in the guide says, accordingly he, Solomon, likens matter, which is the cause of all these bodily pleasures. So matter itself is the cause of uh, man's desire to seek pleasure and lust after. To a harlot, who is also a married woman. The fact his entire book is based on this allegory, and we shall explain in various chapters of this treatise, his wisdom is likened matter to a married harlot. And we shall explain how he concluded this book of his with a eulogy of the woman who is not a harlot, but confines herself to attending to the welfare of her household and her husband. For all the hindrances keeping man from his ultimate perfection, every deficiency affecting him and every disobedience come to him from his matter alone as well shall explain in this treaty. So they're, they're, they're relating woman to the matter that that the man uh, is con uh, she conducts the man to her and uh, she's the one who causes him to um, interfere with his perfection guide to 17 now we're going to they're going to refer to plato um maimonides is going to refer to plato here thus plato and his predecessors designated matter as the female See, I told you. And form as the male. 
So when you hear the word matter now, you know they're talking about a female and form is a man. Now you know that the principles of the existent subject to generation and corruption are three. Matter, for, and particularized privation, which is always conjoined with matter. For were it, were it not for this conjunction with privation, matter would not receive form. It is in this sense that privation is to be considered as one of the principles. However, when a form is achieved, the particular privation in question, I mean the privation of the form that is achieved, disappears and another privation is conjoined with matter and this goes on forever and ever as has been made clear in natural science. So they're equating to the, the, the um, connection, the power between a man and a woman. They're relating it to conduction in science. Guide 3-8. How extraordinary is what Solomon said in his wisdom when likening matter to a married harlot. For matter is in no way found without form and is consequently always like a married woman who is never separated from a man and is never free. Now, didn't Jesus say to leave your mother and cleave to your wife? And this is what is saying is that uh, there is a, um, a magnetic pull to be together. So this, this would corrupt the man's ability to reach his higher intellectual ability that was lost in the Garden of Eden. I hope I said that correctly. However, notwithstanding her being a married woman, she never ceases to seek for another man to substitute for her husband, and she deceives and drags him on in every way until he obtains from her what her husband used to obtain. This is the stage of matter, for whatever form is found in it does, but prepares it to receive it from another. Guide 3-9. Uh, All man's acts of disobedience and sins are consequent upon his matter and not upon his form. So he's not responsible for anything. It comes from his matter. Whereas all his virtues are consequent upon his form. For example, man's apprehension of his creator, his mental representation of every intelligible, um, every intelligible, his control of his desire and his anger, his thought on what ought to be preferred and what ought to be avoided are all of them consequent upon his form. So he's responsible, is what this is saying. No matter what comes at him, ultimately he's responsible. On the other hand, his eating and his drinking and his copulation and his passionate re desire for these particular things, as well as his anger and all bad habits found in him are all of them consequent upon his matter. Guide 3, 8. As for Solomon's dictum, a woman of virtue who can find. So there's not a good one. That's, this, this is where that your righteousness is filthy rags. It's the same meaning. See? Solomon's dictum is a woman of virtue who can find a woman of virtue. There's no righteousness there. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. And this whole parable is clear. For if it so happens that the matter of man is excellent and suitable, neither dominating him nor corrupting his constituent, that matter is divine gift. To sum it up, it is easy, as we have mentioned, to control suitable matter. If it is unsuitable, 
it is not impossible for someone trained to quell it. So basically, if she dots all her I's and crosses all her T's and does everything according to what he says, then she is considered a divine gift. But if she doesn't, she's unsuitable matter, and it is not possible for someone even trained to quell it. Guide 230. Among the things you ought to know is the following explanation, which they gave, which they give in the Midrash. They mention that the serpent had, had a rider, and that it was of the size of a camel, that it was the rider who led Eve astray, and that the rider was Samael. They applied this name to Satan. Thus, it has become clear to you that Samael is Satan. Among the things you ought to know and have your attention aroused to is the fact that the serpent had in no respect direct relations with Adam and that it did not speak to him and that such a conversation and relation only took place between him and Eve. It was through the intermediation of Eve that Adam was harmed and that the serpent destroyed him. Extreme enmity only comes to be realized when the serpent and Eve and its seed and hers. On the other hand, her seed is indubitably the seed of Adam because she came out of him. Even more strange is the tie between the serpent and Eve. I mean between its seed and hers. A tie that is in the head and the heel. She being victorious over it through the head and it over her through the heel. Now, Maimonides' sexual ethics. Mishnah Torah Hilk Hilshot Hilk Hilk yeah Hilkot um, three two. He should not have sexual intercourse except to make his body healthy, or to maintain the species. Thus, he will not have sexual intercourse whensoever he should lust but whenever he knows he has a need to emit sperm. So that's if he, you know, if, he, if he's erect and he needs to get rid of it, that's what they're saying. As by way of medicine uh, to maintain the species. So if he feels aroused and has the need, then it's okay to do that, to use her to, to emit the sperm, to further the species. Now, in the Mishnah Torah, the Hilchot, the, the Hilchot 419, anyone who overindulges in sex, old age, leaps upon him. His power fails. His eyes become dim. A bad odor exudes from his mouth and his armpits. The hairs of his head, eyebrows, and eyelids fall out, and many other pains befall him. Therefore, a man must be careful in this matter if he wants to live well. He should not have sexual intercourse unless he finds his body healthy and very strong. Mishnah Torah, Hilkot um, 619. Semen constitutes the strength of the body, its life and the light of the eyes, its emission to excess causes physical decay, debility, and diminished vitality. Thus Solomon, in his wisdom, said, Give not thy strength unto women. Proverbs 31.3 In the Mishnah Torah, Hilchot uh, 5.4 Conubal intercourse with one's wife is always permitted. Still, this relation, too, should be invested by the scholar with sanctity. 
he should not always be with his spouse after the manner of a rooster, but should fulfill his marital obligations on a Friday night if he is physically in vigorous condition. Cohabitation should take place not at the beginning of the night when one is satiated and the stomach is full, nor towards the close of the night when one feels hungry, but at midnight when the food is digested. Mishnah Torah Hilchot 5.7 He, the scholar, will not enter into conversation with a woman on the street, not even with his wife, his sister, or his daughter. Mishnah Torah Hilkat Yezodei HaTorah. Uh, hence, it may be inferred that all the prophets, when the prophetic power left them, returned to their tents, that is, attended to the satisfaction of their physical needs. Moses, our teacher, never went back to his former tent. He accordingly permanently separated himself from his wife and abstained from similar gratifications. His mind was closely attached to the rock of the universe. The divine glory never departed from him. The skin of his face sent forth rays of light and he was sanctified like the angels. Mishnah Torah. A man should direct all his thoughts and activities to the knowledge of God alone. This should be his aim in sitting, rising, and conversation. How should this be carried out? Whether engaged in commerce or in manual labor for profit, one's heart should not be solely set on the accumulation of wealth, but he should do these things in order to obtain therewith his bodily needs of food, drink, shelter, the demands of married life. So too, when he eats, drinks, or cohabits, his purpose should not be to secure physical gratification, in which case he would only eat and drink that which was pleasing to the palate and cohabitate for the sake of sensual pleasure but he should have it in mind that he eats and drinks solely to maintain his body and its organs in health and vigor. And so since life is impossible without eating and drinking, he will be guided in his choice of feed and drink by hygienic considerations to recover and maintain sound health. Thus too in married life, his purpose in cohabitation will be to preserve health or propagate the species. <clears throat> Commentary on Avot 1.5 Conversation with a woman is mostly about conjugal matters, Tashmish. Guide 3.33 Most of the lust of the licentious of the multitude consists in an appetite for eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse. This is what destroys man's last perfection, what harms him also in his first perfection. So this is what brought Adam down in his first level of perfection and brought his mentality and ability to understand higher things down. Uh, and uh, now the struggle to achieve that, um, that mental capacity uh, through the scholars has to be through pushing away things that bring you down, which is the matter is your wife and the desires of the flesh. Okay, so that's um, that's all I'm going to read for you about this now because it can go on and on and on. You know, there's so much in the oral law that Moses Maimonides uh, expounded on. And uh, what the what the Jews follow, it's just completely mind-boggling um, how uh, a woman is considered to be um, evil and only here to increase the species and. Um, not to be, uh, not to get close to the woman, 
to get emotionally attached. Partially, this is why they have arranged marriages. They say that uh, you don't fall in love and then get married. You get married and then you find somebody who has something in common with you and then you make it work. And your priority, both of you are to follow these laws. So basically, this is the team. This is the help me that they're talking about. See, the woman has to cooperate with the law. And she, she is there to assist the man to elevate his consciousness to a higher level. So she's used in every single way, shape or form for him to, uh, to accomplish and reestablish what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. Thank you for listening. I'll be back with more. God bless you.